me record it now. So today I just wanted to go over liquidity. You guys chose liquidity. Uh, can I just ask why everybody chose liquidity? <laughs> And nobody chose um, trading psychology. <laughs> I was so surprised because I had to choose one to see the um, poll on on the Telegram group, and I was like, everybody chose liquidity. Nobody would say ah, trading psychology, which is very important. Too. Do you guys know that trading trading psychology is very important? now you can see my you see this one we, we, are, we are more interested in the chat now for now okay well, mm. all right anyways everything with trading is is important like i i said one time like it takes mm -hmm. um you to pay attention to the details and especially with liquidity you need to be able to pay attention to details so i wrote down a few things about liquidity here and i've given some examples as to um you know how we can take advantage of that uh and how we can spot it in the market so i'm using gold as an example because um you know although it happens on every pair so i'm just using gold as an example Right, but first of all, what is liquidity? I've written this little note here. Um, the the main, you know, the the normal meaning of liquidity is for you for there to be enough like money in the market. So when they say um, the forex market is the most liquid market in the world, like it has enough liquidity, there is liquidity there. That means like there is a lot of money pumping into the market that is making it volatile. So there is, um, you know, it is able to be traded frequently, right? So, but, but on the charts, you know, because it means that there is a lot of money being introduced in, in. so on the charts is like, there's a lot of money in a particular area. So you begin to see it displayed um, in different ways. So. Liquidity is everywhere in the markets, like it's on the charts, like everywhere. That's why you don't you don't trade, uh, you know, anyhow. You don't just trade out of nowhere. You you want to, you know, pick your setups well and then trade your setups and then get out of the market, and then come back again, pick your setup, trade your setup, get out of the market. Like you don't marry the charts because there's a lot going on. There are structures that are breaking structures. There's so many, <laughs> there are so many things. There are so many things going on at the same time. So you just want to pick the most appropriate setup for you. Take your money and leave. And when it's the next time you come back, take your money and leave. So um, the market requires liquidity to move. So I I see liquidity as like fuel for price to go in a particular direction that he wants to go and that fuel means that it is going to um, pick up a lot of others below or above a certain area so liquidity is very good to be aware of especially when it, when it has been swept and usually once once it is swept and once it is swept an impulse um can you guys hear me since my connection is unstable yes ma'am okay so once it is swept an impulse in the opposite direction happens um i'll give this example here where we have this gold although we'll get into examples soon but um something like this liquidity swept here and then they ha we had like an impulse move go up with um gold in that area and it can be a great great confluence to form your trade idea although you don't just go to the markets now because you know liquidity you are just say oh liquidity here liquidity there liquidity there you get confused and it's going to be you start acting crazy because you see it will be giving you anxiety because you're like is that liquidity here is that liquidity here liquidity take no it's a great confluence to add 
to your knowing of structures, knowing your point A to B, knowing your understanding your market structures, understanding the supply and the demand zones, um, your support and resistance areas, right? So first of all, the types of li liquidity um, that are being formed on the market, they are very, I guess I have to, sorry, they are very common, the most common types of liquidity that we can see. Um, so you know how we all learned, so I drew this out cause that was not clear. You know how we all learned chart patterns. Um, can you guys men mention some of the chart patterns that you know? Hey, that was, uh, double yeah. top. Yeah, double top, double bottom, your wedges, your yeah. triangles, you know, all of those. Um, they, they are valid for a particular point in time, but they are obvious levels, right? And if the market is going to need liquidity to move, the levels that it's going to, you know, check or target to move in the direction that it wants to move are those obvious levels. Literally, when we have a double bottom like this, equal highs or equal lows here, what we are, what the market is telling us is that we are ready to go up, right? Price is ready to move up. And if it is really, really strong, it's obvious that anybody that entered for a buy around this area will put their stop loss below the lows because that's it if you want to have a high probability trade if you are wrong about the trade it would come against you that means that you were wrong about the equal lows right so now when price wants to really really go up you would see it do something like this and then go in the direction that it wants to go and uh, what happened there was that liquidity was taken it means that there are a lot of orders in this area that price needed to come and take before uh, going up. And same with um, the M pattern, that's the double top. Um, we have, you know, price at obvious levels. So just think of liquidity as money in obvious levels. That's why you see a lot of people when they want to identify liquidity, they use the dollar sign and everything I put it there because it is just like juicy. They are like juicy levels where you know that after price hits that, the fuel that it needs to like push is going to like, it's going to get that strength, you know? And um, I want us to have this kind of scenario, this kind of uh, picture when it comes to liquidity. So, uh, when price wants to move, like I said, it needs fuel, right? So imagine we are in a range like this, and then, you know, support and resistance. So what do we do at support? Yeah, yeah what do we do at the support area? And what do we do at the resistance area? That support and resistance. Exactly. So you buy support, you sell at resistance. So let's just use this um, range example now. You buy a support, you sell at resistance. Now, when it comes to liquidity, it's obvious that everybody is selling at this point and everybody's buying at this point. So we have um, a lot of traders that always look for the breakout of a trend and never wait for a retest. You know, how I trade and take entries is, um, one of the ways is to wait for a retest after a break, a valid retest. So it's not just about price coming here. You have to see like a, a, a reasons for that, that the retest is going to hold, right? So when price does something like this and breaks out, a lot of traders would have entered here at the breakout and now place their stop loss just above where they entered. Right, which makes we like which makes a lot of sense. Meanwhile, 
you know how anytime price came here, it went up, price came here, went up, price came here, went up. And this is like three touches using this example. And everybody has the mindset that after three touches, the zone is strong. So the next time that price is coming here, uh, people that don't wait for confirmation would just buy straight or would have even set limit orders there to buy straight and then set stop loss below. So what happens now is that when price comes down, it has taken this stop loss of those that, um, you know, set their buy orders. Are you following? Yes, ma'am. So it has, yes. it has taken those out and then price goes back up and now takes this stop loss of those people that sold at this point so now it has enough enough like fuel to move in the direction that it wants to go the best way to trade liquidity is to actually wait and see because one of the reasons why people get stopped out a lot and i also sometimes make these mistakes mistake because you need to really really pay attention to the details on the time frame that you are trading on right of course we don't enter on a higher time frame we enter on the low time frames like your know, 30 minutes 15 minutes uh and if you really really want to be very attentive you can use the five minutes but if you don't have enough experience don't use the five minutes or one minute um just take your time and grow into it right but 15 minutes 30 minutes great right but if you are looking at the one hour time frame and let's say you've done your analysis on four hours and then you're looking at one hour to take your trade and all of that uh this usually happens on on every particular time frame so you watch for liquidity in that area that you are so this picture of you know price taking out buyers, price taking out sellers at the same time. That is liquidity. So what it does is that it causes confusion. And you're like, where does this price really want to go? Where, like, where are you going? And then it eventually does what comes back now. You know, because uh, that it needed to like, <laughs> it needed, it needed, extra fall to move. So a lot of people would have felt like they missed the entire move and then, you know, started uh, selling around this area. Meanwhile, this is just the perfect opportunity for the patient ones to wait for it to come back and retest the order blocks or supply zones that are in this area. Then you join the trend down. That's why trading is like it takes it requires a lot of patience right so i'm going to share some chat examples uh soon but the areas obvious areas where you can spot liquidities are these equal highs and equal lows and then your trend lines also because your trend lines are a form of support and resistance so around this area this is like a trend price is making higher highs and higher lows. And then you have something like this, then before going back in the direction that it's supposed to go. So it takes a lot of practice for you to understand it. But first of all, you want to train your eyes to see those obvious like areas. Um, so we are going to use this recent one that i circled earlier so you can see that this is like a trend line liquidity here right but before that we had this support area in this zone this is one hour sorry Are you guys following? Yes, ma'am. Um, so price came down here to take out, to grab liquidity around this area and even around here. Can you see it? Here, let me circle it. 
here, here, this is support, support. So even if you had waited in this area, it still came, came back down. And that brings me to how do you know the liquidity has been grabbed and it is ready to go up? How you know is it leaves behind a sharp wick. Like if there is a huge weak rejection in that area. So everywhere it, liquidity has been grabbed, you would see like large weak rejection in that area. So let me go back. In fact, let me use another pair. Let me use GBP USD. So where we have stops like equal lows, I can even see this just straight away. This, this was forming a sort of W pattern and then price came down. This would be the liquidity that was grabbed, uh, you know, the candlestick that grabbed the liquidity. And even right now I can spot this um, trend line liquidity, but it has not yet been grabbed. Right, that's why liquidity is also like a confluence for you. You don't just say because you spotted it up there, it's going to come and grab it immediately. No, price will do what it wants when it wants it. <laughs> when it wants, um, you can't force it to just come up when it when you want it. You have to wait because there are other things that are happening. The structure that needs to finish there is it's probably a major structure that is on the move and all of that so when you see liquidity like when you see a, like a m or w pattern forming you you have it in mind but you are not like forcing it to come down to to break it before this price came to me um you know, grab this liquidity around here. How many pips did it go up? It went up like 94 pips or 84 pips on, G on GU, right? And it has even already tested this other block here. Right, this old demand area. So, you know, if you had used that perspective to like take your trade, but you are aware, that you know this area is an area of liquidity you take your trades with caution but it did go in the direction and you take your pips and you leave the market and wait for the next movement that it's going to do um let me find another example so there there is you know it's like the market is in a cycle of just different patterns forming areas of liquidity. Uh, this is an obvious one here also. Oh, no, let me not say obvious, but here. As you can see, I didn't look for examples down. I'm just, you know, looking at the chart as it is right now. This is another one here. So whenever liquidity has been grabbed, no, take notes that the price will leave a strong week. There will be like a large week there, like in this, this candlestick here. So that's too close. Oosh. You can see price made like a M formation here and then went up and we had a huge week rejection in that area. So it's just about paying attention to the details and just waiting. And if you understand your trading sessions and the times that we have high volume in the market, um, you would understand that these things happen around those times. That's why sometimes I just wait for New York open or when stock market opened, or even just before you know, London opens and all of that. You just wait for the price to like, do whatever I want or during high impact news that's when it has the chance to grab um liquidity just to move in the other areas 
Another thing you need to pay attention to are these types of double tops and double bottoms here. Uh, can you see it? Let me, here. You know, when you have two candlesticks just together, that is a form of double top or double bottom. If you see them anywhere close to where you want to enter, you wait. In as much as did, this didn't come and get grabbed immediately, but I, I won't be comfortable taking this because that's just a sweet, sweet area for liquidity to come. Like, it's like, you know, juice. <laughs> so you, you wait. Um, yeah, does anybody have any questions so far before I do the last um, phase? Okay. All right. So when <clears throat> when um, how do I say this? Okay, so when price wants to transition um, from an uptrend to a downtrend, because I know in my trading course when I was taking market structure part one, I mentioned um, you know the different stages. Uh, where we have an uptrend, downtrend, then an uptrend transition into a downtrend, the downtrend transition to an uptrend, and all that. So when we have price making higher highs and higher lows like this, now and you see something like this, and you know it has already the uptrend has been trending you've not been part of the uptrend or you've been part of the uptrend however the case may be um you you have it in mind that this is creating a trend line liquidity so definitely at some point we are going to have price you know come back to uh you know level up in that area and take that liquidity. So when we have something like this, oh, can you hear me? Yes, ma Hello? Ma yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. So when we have something like this and Price, you have like a pattern like this, probably you just, you are analyzing for your week or doing your markup for your week. And then you have, um, you see a sort of pattern like this, either on a higher or lower time frame. I've had a case maybe just take notes that whatever happened on the left will happen on the right. And this right now has become left. So price has the tendency to make an aggressive push to grab this liquidity above here before continuing um, to move down. So these are like just um, pictures that I have at the back of my mind while trading. And I know that liquidity is going to be grabbed in different areas. The recent example that I can give is yeah, he's even GU, right? See? GU, uh, no, let me use Euro USD. It's better. Um, Euro USD. Yes, it, it did this. Um, let's go to a four hour time frame. Hope my chat is not too distant for you. Get used to it. <laughs> so um, you have this uptrend, and then you had the consolidation, and then price just came down. And what happened here is price took out this. Uh, if you want to say it like that, that price took out this, um, you know, trend line liquidity here, and then what is doing because we have a lot of like imbalance movements here where. We didn't have time to retest properly before going down. This is not like a healthy um, trend, right? It was very volatile and it moved too fast. So right now, what price is just trying to do is just to fill in all of those things. And then um, that's the example I was trying to give about an aggressive push up 
after like a, an uptrend transitioning to a downtrend you have this aggressive move and i think that's why last week i was like oh i'm 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 buying that's one of my confluences like i'm buying euro usd right now um although last week's market was very very choppy um price were was consolidating a lot but i still carry the same bias because uh, of this entire trend here so if if you if you really want to know what's going to happen or how you can add to your confluence just look at what happened previously and look at how price reacted in a certain area and if there is liquidity and even you know understanding with our double tops and double bottoms here you can see price grabbed liquidity before actually making this move so if you can take your time to back test and to see how your pair the pair that you are trading um you know how it grabs liquidity when it does that you know because sometimes for HS session you know there are times I know, I, I know New York, um, you know, is during the open of New York and also the open of the stock markets. And that's the time where we have a lot of high impact news and everything is just crazy. Um, if you also see here, you have um, triple top or even, yeah, you have triple tops here price is moving there and then it came to grab liquidity before going down this takes a lot of practice i'm not even going to say like oh it's easy peasy or like that because there are times where double tops will form and price will grab liquidity but it will still go up higher so how you can give yourself an edge is to make sure you see the strong week first Right, and when you see a double top forming on a lower time frame that you want to enter on, you wait and see um, what price wants to do if it wants to grab liquidity or not. So, does anyone have any question? JP Huh? Oh, so need to know <laughs> that's funny do you guys understand what i'll try to do i'm trying to find a clean chat but apparently i'm teaching on every chat these days uh okay so i wanted to give this gu recent example now um you know i know i sent a signal for gu by last week um but my main overview um bias of g gj rather is you know for it to sell but because i saw like this area here i think we are around this zone obviously around this zone and i knew okay we're not just going to go down without a fight right so it's going to go up a little bit and test these levels but in as much as we are testing this um you know level of supply here i can still see liquidity above so you already know that before i'm even going to take a trade on gj this coming week i'm going to be waiting for that liquidity grab because this place is too juicy to pass by and this is obviously, you know, a level of supply where it is obvious that, oh, price, um, you know, retested support, you know, it's a key level and stuff like that. So stop losses will be here. So my main um, area that I'm looking at is around there, but I'm going to send you guys my chart markup on the group and, um, I'll be marking up tomorrow morning. I just decided to sleep all through today. Just, just so to just rest and do a lot of things. Um, so I'll send, I'll mark up tomorrow and send in my chat um, to you guys. And then we are going to have a week full of pips. Yeah. So I, I, one more thing. I remember telling you guys that, you know, in this market, 
you are missed opportunities are like the same thing and you're going to have a lot of missed opportunities and i've been thinking like ever since i said that i've actually been missing more than usual I, like I kept track of, because when I'm trading, I have a journal and I keep track of what I'm looking at and the things I want to take. And eventually, did I take it or not? Or how did it end up? But I saw like, I didn't even take half of it. Like it's either I was doing something and I missed the entry or it even hit stop loss and kicked me out before moving in that direction. And I'm like, what is happening? So I'm going to reverse it and say, you are not going to miss opportunities in this market. If you are Amen. going to take the trades. Amen. <laughs> Amen. No. You Amen. To, no. You, are, you guys, you are going to take the trades that are meant for you, right? Whatever was happening will happen after you are out of the market or even before. But the setups that you are looking at that for you that are ready for you you will take them and not miss them we will take them and not miss them because amen yeah i'm you if this if the spirit of whatever i say happens is that we are going to get a lot of pips this week in profit <laughs> amen hundred and above amen <laughs> Part yeah. two. so um what I want you guys to do this week is to back test and look for um, the liquidity levels that we talked about. Um, and even with when I sent a map up during the week and I saw something, I said like, okay, we have liquidity in this level, but you, around here, right? But you can see that price didn't get up there, but someday, someday, when you see GJ trading above the 169 and the 170s, you just see what's happening. This is what it's doing, right? So uh, you guys should back test this and make sure you train your eyes to see it on your chat. At least spend one hour a day um, back testing and learning and doing all of these things as a trader. I still do my, I still get my, you know, back testing time in once in a while right uh, but that's because for years and years i've been spending an hour a day i can't even remember the day that i've not seen candlestick it's just just you know except the time when i took like a month or for two months off because i wasn't feeling too well but like i can't remember like looking at the chat i'm always always looking at candlestick either learning or back testing or reaffirming or just doing something so get familiar get in tune with whatever you are trading and i will see you guys on the group and next week for real analysis all right so have a good night guys good night, good night, good night thank you